Hi everyone. In this video, we'll be covering mandibular movements, which is a very important topic. Do make sure that you have at least a basic idea of the anatomy of the temporomandibular joint and the muscles of mastication before you jump into this. So I just thought I'll cover this um, video in two parts as I felt that doing it all in just one video would make it exceedingly long and maybe difficult to understand. So here we go. The masticatory system consists of the TMJ, muscles, ligaments, and the teeth, all of which exist in a very harmonious relationship with each other and are highly controlled and regulated by the neurologic system. So an upset to any one of these components will upset the entire masticatory system. Also, the mandible is capable of movement in all three planes and these movements are not isolated. We'll see how in the coming slides. So it is very important to have a very good understanding of mandibular movements because then we'll be able to understand articulators and occlusion well and that will help us in fabricating restorations for the patient that will not upset the patient's existing physiology or cause any disturbance to the patient's masticatory system. Let's discuss a few basic things first. Now like we discussed in the previous slide, the mandible is capable of movement in all three planes. Now each of these movements has a rotation component and a translation component. Rotation is the movement of an object about an axis and translation is the bodily shift of an object from one point to another. Let me explain the rotation and translation movement that occurs during opening of the mouth to better explain this. So here we have a rough diagram of the TMJ. So here we have the mandibular fossa and articular eminence of the temporal bone. Here is the upper joint cavity. Here is the articular disc. Here we have the lower joint cavity. And here we have the condylar process or the condylar head to be more precise. And this is a view of both the condyles from the front. Okay, so as we begin to open our mouth, the condyles don't move forward, they don't move backward, they just rotate in place. So they rotate about this axis or this horizontal axis right here. And this pure rotation movement of the condyle occurs for about 15 to 20 millimeters of incisor separation. Now, as we begin to open our mouth further, what happens is that the condyles rotate, but at the same time, they move down. That is, they translate. There is a bodily shift of the condyle. So this is called as translation. The mandible is capable of five basic movements, which are protrusion, that is a forward movement, retrusion, which is a backward movement, elevation, which is an upward movement or the movement that occurs when we close our mouth, depression or downward movement, which is the movement that occurs as we open our mouth, and lateral or side to side movements which mainly occur during the grinding of food. Now when we talk about lateral movements we talk about working side and non-working or balancing side. Now the side to which the mandible moves is the working side. Now I do understand it can be a little confusing at first but I want you to do a little something. I want you to place your hand on the right side of your mandible and I want you to try to push this hand outward using your mandible. So you'll find that your jaw moves to the right side. So in this case, the right side would be the working side. And the non-working side or the balancing side is the side opposite to the working side, which in this case would be the left side. Understanding movement becomes a whole lot easier if we were to look at the planes and axes of movement. So what is a plane? A plane is just like an imaginary flat surface running through the body. And an axis is an imaginary line about which the body rotates. So if you look at the first scenario right here, here we have the sagittal plane. As you can see, it divides the mandible into a right side and a left side. And here we have the transverse axis or the horizontal axis. Now when a body rotates about an axis, the movement occurs in a plane that's perpendicular to the axis. So, in this case, when the mandible rotates about the transverse axis, how will it move? It'll, the mandible will move up and down. 
So this up and down movement of the mandible occurs about the sagittal plane. So similarly, movements occur um, about the sagittal axis on a frontal plane in the second scenario or movements occur about the vertical axis in a horizontal plane. But like I said, mandibular movements are dynamic and the mandible moves across along different planes and about different axes at the same time. So this is just to give you an idea of just the planes and axes of the movement so that we can understand more difficult concepts easily. Here we have the sagittal plane. Here we have the transverse axis or the horizontal axis perpendicular to the sagittal plane. Now, as we discussed previously, as we begin to open our mouth, the condyles just rotate in place and they rotate about this axis, this transverse or the horizontal axis. And because it is a pure rotation movement that occurs, it is called the terminal hinge axis because hinge means rotation. So this rotation occurs about the sagittal plane and it occurs for about 20 millimeters or so of incisor separation. And like we discussed previously, after that, as we begin to open our mouth further, the condyles begin to translate. We know that the mandible moves in all three planes. It moves up, down, front, back and side to side, thanks to the TMJ and the muscles. But let's not forget a very important third component, which are the teeth themselves. Now, as the mandible goes through these different movements, the anatomy of the teeth also help guide these mandibular movements. So we can say that mandibular movements are dictated posteriorly by the TMJ and the muscles. So they are called the posterior determinants and they are also dictated anteriorly by the teeth, which are called the anterior determinants. The TMJs are the way they are, right? And there's nothing we can do about that, which is why we try to replicate the TMJ on the articulator using the patient's bite records. But we have direct control over the teeth. So the restorations that we provide to the patient must be harmonious. We give them an anatomy such that it is in harmony with the patient's existing TMJ and the neuromusculature. Speaking of border movements, now border means boundary, right? So border movements, to very simply put it, are the maximum movements that the mandible is capable of. So Dr. Puzelt, what he did was, he described or he traced the border movements on the three planes, which are the sagittal, frontal and the transverse planes. This is exactly what Dr. Puzelt did. He traced the border movements of the mandible from the side or on the sagittal plane, from the top or on the transverse plane, and from the front or on the frontal plane. Now, when we take these border movements on these three different planes and put them together, we would get this three-dimensional structure, right? This is what Dr. Pozelt called as the Pozelt's envelope of motion. So the boundaries of this envelope of motion or the three-dimensional structure would be the border movements of the mandible in all three planes. So all the functional movements of the mandible occur within the boundaries of this puzzle's envelope of motion. That's it for today. Thank you so much, guys. I hope I was able to explain it well. Feel free to shoot any questions or comments. Um, take care and stay safe. Bye.